It's a kind of isolation that the United States is facing. It's isolated alongside the Israelis, the Saudis, and the United Arab Emirates. Nobody else wants war. Nobody else wants uh, this deal to end. And so I think it's really out of frustration that you see the United States jump the gun, come in very quickly, and say that, you know, Iran is, is doing this, Iran is doing that, and therefore we have to ret retaliate. It's important to remember that in 2017, the CIA created a special unit called the Iran Mission Center, run by Michael D. Andre. And this is an important outfit because its entire mandate has been to ratchet up pressure on Iran. Now, I don't know what happened to the Norwegian oil tanker or the Japanese oil tanker, but I'd be very interested to hear what the Iran Mission Center at the CIA has been up to since 2017. I'm not saying what happened uh, in, in the Gulf of Hormuz is very clear, that there are alternative explanations. We don't know what happened. We should be suspicious of the narrative put forward by the U.S. State Department, but we should also be suspicious about what happened. We need to ask more questions. I mean, consider this from a regional standpoint. The United States, the Russians and others are in the middle of a very serious diplomatic effort in Afghanistan. There are meetings that the U.S. has held in Doha, Qatar. There are meetings that the Russians have held, held in Moscow to dial down the almost 19-year war that has been taking place in Afghanistan. Imagine if the United States strikes against Iran right now. It would bring catastrophe further to Afghanistan. It would open up the wounds in Iraq and in Syria. Mr. Zarif has made it very clear that an attack on Iran is not merely an attack on Iran. It's going to create even more catastrophe in that region. That's one of the main reasons, Amy, why the Chinese are very interested in not allowing any kind of war in that region. They have a lot at stake, especially in terms of their Belt and Road Initiative, which cuts right through this region, goes through Iran. Nobody wants a war here. It's important for Americans to understand that the U.S. government is deeply isolated on this issue of Iran and on the way that the U.S. government portrays Iran. In the rest of the world, Iran is seen as a stabilizing force in that region. For some strange reason, the U.S. government believes that Iran is an interloper. In other words, there are almost 80 million Iranians who live in West Asia, and they somehow are seen to be out of place, whereas the United States, which is, you know, thousands of miles away, uh, portrays itself as a regional actor. This is very bizarre for people around the world, and I think Americans need to understand that. This is very chilling, very disturbing. You know, they are marching us directly into a war. In other words, they are marching the world into war. Uh, they are pushing Iran. Uh, the sanctions have had a catastrophic impact on Iran's external revenues, its ability to earn money. There is, you know, serious medical crisis inside the country. I think focus should be on that. You know, we've already seen how sanctions destroy countries, how they put a lot of stress on the country. But that's not the focus of anybody's attention. You know, we're allowing people like Mr. Pompeo, John Bolton, and others to set the agenda here. You know, they are being allowed to say that Iran is a criminal country and must be therefore attacked. I think this is very disturbing. Saudi Arabia, of course, is playing a lead role in this. I mentioned the Iran Mission Center. Mr. Michael Andreas is very close to the Saudis. Uh, in fact, uh, has played an important role in the CIA's drone program and is likely to have had some role in Saudi war on Yemen. So, I mean, this is uh, something for people to consider. This very quick march to war uh, must be stopped. I mean, the reason I'm saying this, it's not just about Iran. It's about the region. It's about Eurasia. And the Trump administration, I think, is playing fast and loose with the facts and is being very reckless with world affairs on this. You know, we see the Trump administration behaving recklessly, mercurially, perhaps, in other parts of the world. That's true. But with Iran, I think their finger is right on the trigger. And the very fact that Pompeo gave this briefing should suggest to people that this is not the time to be cynical, to sit, sit back and say, I don't think they're going to do it. It's very likely that the United States is going to make some strike on Iran, and that strike 
is going to open further the gates of hell for the region.